Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Sound works, <laughs> at least that. <laughs> Good morning. Let's give it a couple more minutes for more folks to join. If they are going to join. We might not get a lot of attendance to this because of the holidays, but uh, let's give it a couple more minutes. It's not holidays yet. I mean, that's like a week and a half still to go. I know. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Everybody's gearing towards the holidays. And yep. A lot of stuff to organize and whatnot. So. So uh, you see, the, you're from the K0S project, right? Yeah, me and me and Karen. Karen yeah, is Karen. also okay. working with okay. K0S. So I'm sure Fabiano is not from the Open Cluster Management. So um, let's see if those guys show up. If, if they don't, then we can just go ahead with the K0S presentation. All right, all right. All right, I think um, probably not going to get a lot more people. So yeah, we can get started. The, this presentation that's actually recorded and it gets posted on the CNCF tag runtime uh, YouTube channel. So anybody wants to watch the presentation, they can go back there. Yeah. All right. All right. Let me try to find the current yeah. buttons where to share yeah. this one. How do I? Okay, I guess it's visible, right? 
Yep, yeah, we can see it. Right? But it looks kind of small, so it's not like full screen. But... Yeah, it's it's not a full screen yet. Okay, yeah. All right, looks good. All right, all right. So so we're all like like uh, deep down techies here. So so I'm gonna I'm gonna run the slides through quickly quickly and and. Uh, then uh, I was planning to show a quick demo, and then we can dive into, into like what are, what what uh, interesting aspects are, and, and and basically based on the discussion, we can dive into what into what other direction we we want to dive into. Sounds good. Thank you. So, well, K zeros is uh, what what we kind of uh, where the zero comes from. We we try to make everything like a zero friction. <laughs> I mean. As, as, as you know, Kubernetes is, is not one of the easiest things out there. So, so there's always going to be some level of friction, but uh, we, we try to make it as close to zero as possible. I mean, at least on the, on the parts that we can actually influence. Uh, so basically, basically K0 is, is like, um, uh, it, it's a single binary distribution. So you can you can really easily set it up on on basically any any linux box and and uh you don't have to worry about okay what, what other packages i need and pull in like 100 different other packages and and and, and so forth uh what which which also means and and like things like that uh we, we can actually patch every single component from the stack within k zeros itself and and we don't have to have to wait that uh, some upstream upstream repo has some updated package available or or, or, or anything. So we can patch anything anything and everything within K zeros itself. And it also means that there's no like dependencies between the K zeros and the OS, not from the package point of view, and then not also from the upgrade point of view. So you can safely safely patch both layers in in dif different uh, different kind of cycles and 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 different need based on different needs. We don't have to intertwine them at all. Of course, as 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 with many other other distros, that there, there's a lot of batteries included, but 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 everything is like uh, swappable. Uh, what, what's of course interesting from the runtime point of view is that uh, we use container D as the default runtime, and that's packaged within the K0s itself. So uh, if, if, if you look into the K0s binary, there's actually container D binary also within, and, and of course all the needed shims and whatnot, so everything's included. Uh, we bundle Kube router as the default CNI, CNI provider. Calico is also supported out of the box. Uh, at CD, of course, the, the default data store for the control plane, but we also support Kine, Kine and, and SQLite for the data store as an, as an option. Kind of, uh, I mean, at CD is, is not one of, the, one of the easiest things to manage and, and, and also from the resource consumption point of view, it's, it's quite resource hungry. So in the in the kind of uh, small single node cluster cases, it's it's more prefer preferable to have this kind of SQLite combo it uses a lot less resources. But as I said, anything can be swapped to to whatever whatever you want to use less uh, as a, either as a runtime or as a CNI provider or or what else. But of course, it means that then you have to manage it yourself. So if you want to use Docker as a runtime, then you have to provide the Docker installation yourself, and or if you want to use Cryo or something else. Uh, one of the kind of main technical differences between K zeros and and most other distros is this uh, control plane isolation, and 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 by that what we mean is that that they are actually running like fully isolated. There's no container D, there's no kubelet running on the controller nodes by default. So, which means that you cannot schedule workloads there either on purpose or by accident. And that's one of the learnings that we've had from the past in the, in the team, the, the 
some of the team members have been working with different cube distros and cube based systems for quite a quite a while and that's one of the learnings and and kind of early on design decisions why we wanted to do k zeros in the first place i mean there's no rbac controls that that says that okay you see you see and only you see from the management team is actually actually able and and allowed to deploy stuff on the control plane because you you just control these with uh, basically with taints and tolerations so there's no r back that that says that who can add which taints and tolerations as far as i know i haven't seen anything in that regard what i have seen in the past is is uh some admission controllers that try to prevent these sort of things but but then it becomes hairy and not 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 the least because of like the all, always the indirection in Kubernetes where yeah you you see you see creates the deployment but then it's the other components that that actually create the pod and and, and so on but what, what it actually actually really allows us to do then is is like a super flexible different deployment options uh and 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 uh probably have some better let, let, let's see if i get any better pictures for it in the slides but uh but what it, what it actually means is that uh, you can you can basically run the control plane say in a public cloud and then run the worker plane in your home lab in raspberry pis and whatnot connected to your only to your uh local wi-fi or something which is behind nets and firewalls and whatnot which is actually pretty cool and and then if you think about that as an architectural pattern and 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 then think about like use cases like iot and edge and whatnot it it's actually quite a quite a nice thing and enables a lot of things so, so um, i mean obviously it obviously is very related to k3s and qvh and some of the other CNCF, pro CNCF projects, but have you actually looked at some of those and see how um, K0S sort of dif differentiates in a way from, from those or not? Uh, I haven't, to be honest, I haven't been looking at Cube Edge for a while. I haven't seen how it's how it's been maturing and, and, and whatnot, but, uh, but I think that the kind of, uh, as far as I know, the project, I think it, uh, I think it has, Bit of a different kind of uh, goals in 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 general than K zeros. K three S, of course, it, it has a lot of similar goals and whatnot, but but they've actually implemented things quite quite differently from technical standpoint. And and as far as I know, they can't do this full control plane isolation. As, as far better, as I know, better. Yeah, I think Kubernetes uh, runs on top of Kubernetes. It, it doesn't. Yep. It's it's not Kubernetes itself. It, but it's it's just a way of managing workloads at the edge, and there is um, a component in like um, centralized location. Like it, I mean, it can run on Kubernetes, in Kubernetes nodes in a centralized location, and that actually manages some of the components at the edge. And, and typically, these are Kubernetes nodes at the edge running running the kubelet and um, and connecting to that that. Cubash component in the centralized location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But we're kind of doing the with with our kind of architectural choices and component choices. We can do that as as more like a native Kubernetes thing. I mean, in a in in a sense. Of, of it, course, there's it. there's differences and whatnot. But uh, but but yeah. Got it. Got it. Um. So yeah, so yeah, that that that's basically the sort of edge IoT use cases where where we see a lot of interest towards towards K zeros in in general. So, I mean, one of the one of the typical like technical problems with these sort of edge and and especially IoT cases is that the the devices have very very limited amount of resources. So you just I mean. Even, even if you're networking and, and everything else allows you to run the control plane in a in a in in the in the actual edge site or IoT kind of location, you typically don't have the resources 
I mean, if you think about Raspberry Pi size things they, and, and not which are not actually not Raspberry Pi's like these industrial things connected to automation systems and whatnot, they, they have like usually like one super slow CPU and maybe maybe half a gig of RAM only. So you, you really can't fit the control plane in that. So um, we do, we, we do of, of, of course, also have as, as an open source project, we also have this uh, Azure CTL as the sort of a life cycle management tool for, for the clusters. So just like like eases up the deployment of k zeros when when you're deploying like like say three nodes a ha cluster for the for the control plane and then maybe 10 15 nodes for the worker then it, it kind of uh just automates automates bits and pieces so uh but but of course with k zeros itself we we of course also support out of box this uh like life life cycle management helper functionalities like taking backup of the of the control plane and restoring them back up and and then those sort of things. But uh, the K0 CTL is a main like a helper tool to help you set up things. And and what I've what I've found out that uh, it's super helpful for upgrades, for example, because it, it can automate this like a uh, rolling upgrade upgrades for control planes and workers and do the all do automate all the train cordon drain on cordon dance what i what i started to call it nowadays so so uh yeah one question on the uh, control plane the the state is actually not kept in a etcd right you mentioned that it was mysql right uh etcd we we use etcd by default but okay. but you can also use uh kine and sqlite or mysql or or something behind coin and an etcd is running in redundant mode too and in, in a yes. three node or five node and, okay yes or and one node but but okay you or can choose you can you can choose as many controllers as you want got it, got it. so i think uh, K, k3s only has a single node and, and they only support my sequel i think because they wanted they wanted to keep it really lightweight so i think this is uh, I guess it's a little bit of a different, you know, setup. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we've taken the approach that that we want to support both the lightweight cases and and also the HA cases. So, mm -hmm. and 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 of course also, I mean, from the point of view that that etcd is like the default store anyway in Kubernetes, and and everybody in the Kubernetes ecosystem is more or less familiar with the with the etcd and how to how to how it works and or it sits in the architecture. So that's why we also wanted to keep it in, in, in picture and, and as the default option. Mm -hmm. And the lifecycle management uh, also manages the etcd upgrades and changes? Yes. Or? OK, yes. oh, great. So so basically, I'll, I'll, I'll show you in the in the demo how it works. But, but uh, basically, the controller itself, the, 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 the K0s, when it boots up the controller, it actually manages that CD sort of by itself, and 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 it's it's also also fully elastic. So so you can start with one controller node and then add more when you need. Hmm. That's great. And all the all the CD cluster management is automatic in that case. So you just join a new controller and everything works out of box. We increase and and kind of resize the CD cluster on the fly and everything. So can you downsize or just upsize? If you can downsize, but but there's there's actually one manual step in in there, where you have to actually go and tell etcd that okay, let's remove the member. Got it. Thanks. Because that's that we 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 wanted to, and and that's that that's actually by design as a manual step, because you know etcd downsizing is a is a bit of a, I don't know how to say it politely, but it's 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 like pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. excuse my excuse my french but, uh, <laughs> yeah. but and 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 it that that's one of the points in the cluster management in general where you can like like uh f up things super badly if you don't know what you're doing that's why we wanted to have it as a as a manual manual step yeah you might break things so you might might corrupt the data or something and and it might break the the cluster in a way that you cannot ever ever 
get it recover. working or or exactly. recover yeah exactly so you, you you really have to know what you're doing at that point so that's why we wanted to have it as a as a manual step uh, what, what what we also oh we we actually discussed the etcd already yeah uh, one of the one of the requirements that we have for the load balance for the for the HA setup for the controllers is to have a load balancer in front, uh, which is of course quite quite natural even in in those cases because you you definitely want want to have your kubectl or whatever client you use to to interact with the cluster. You want to have a single point of contact configured, uh, so. But, but but there's also a a more like a technical need for the load balancer to because the because of the tunneling that we do between the workers and controllers. So the workers have to be able to able to maintain a working tunnel through the load balancer on the control plane and whatnot. So that's really mm -hmm. a, a like a hard requirement that we have. And that load balancer is actually set up uh, for kubectl clients or. Or also, it's just the API, uh, API server, I guess. In, uh, for API, yeah, for API server, and then this uh, connectivity server process that we have also on the controllers. So that handles the, the tunneling functionality and whatnot. So it's an external process in the, in the controllers and not baked into the, into the uh, API server. So it's the, it's the API API server network proxy project in the in the GitHub, Got it. Got it. which we call connectivity because the name is the real repo name is just too long. Yeah, what, what, that's automatically set up, or yes, that, this that's fully a, automatic, and it's like using like TLS or something yep. mutual MTLS. Okay, okay, yeah. It, yeah, it's MTLS between the workers and controllers, and then the controller on the controller, uh, we we basically configure the API server whenever it needs to connect with the kubelet on the node. It actually goes through this tunnel. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I mean, kind of architecturally, or that that from the point of view, what's more familiar to 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 people in general, you could think of this as a, as a sort of a reverse SSH tunnels, more or less. I mean, from from like high level point of view, it's it's kind of similar. Mm -hmm. but I can I can show in the in, in the demo part how we configure things and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, well, quite quite modest system requirements. We. We've been able to tackle these kind of industrial use cases where where we actually have like a one super slow ARM B7 CPU on a, on on the node and and half a gig of RAM. Of course, it means that there's not much for the applications anymore. But 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 usually those sort of applications are written in like C or something, and they don't actually require that much memory either. So. Uh, but of course, we do recommend to have like two CPUs and one gig of RAM for the for the worker too. But but we've seen cases with uh, half a gig and, and everything works actually quite quite okay. It's slow, but 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 then again, the the hardware is slow slow, so we can't do much about it. All right. What do you what do you typically see in out in the field, like uh, people running? Uh, control planes using Intel machines, and basically the worker nodes are running in ARM, so you can support the mixed architecture, I suppose, right? Yes, of course, of course. I mean, as 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 you know, the the kubelet is basically just, I mean, just in a super big quotation marks. It's just like pulling the desired state from the API and then doing the work as 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 needed. So there's there, there's mm -hmm. a lot of lot of mixed architecture use cases that we've been seeing. All right. Anybody else had any has any questions? I see Derek on the call. Do you have any questions about container D? Uh, I mean, not particularly, but I mean, if there's anything that you think container D is lacking or hard points, I mean, we'd always like to 
you're about it. Yeah, at least I haven't I I haven't seen any any missing bits and pieces or or I haven't been hearing from the Kazor users any any missing bits and pieces. So so I think that's that that's all fine and dandy and and uh, and I mean I I think the more like the general purpose use cases are are pretty well covered with uh, with container D nowadays. Then, then whether it comes to these more exotic use cases, then I think there's all the all the kind of uh, plugin points and and extension points are pretty much available nowadays. So, so, but yeah, I'll I'll, I'll definitely I'll definitely raise any issues if I hear any any missing bits and pieces. So, from the field. Um, do you do your own builds or do you use our upstream builds? Uh, we do our own builds. Just to just from for the sake of of uh, being able to build everything in a specific configuration because we we built everything as a as a, like a fully static binaries, which makes sense. Which, which some of the I'm I'm not sure whether whether container D whether whether those uh, builds were were fully static or not, but uh, but at least for consistency sake, we wanted to have like everything built by ourselves because most of the upstream stuff wasn't actually fully statically built. So yeah, we we actually encourage that anyways for the different projects to build. But yeah, we like to know different projects if they're use, using using vanilla container D or or compiling in their own plugins yeah. and stuff. Right, right. We do compile it, but but it's like like we. You, you can look it up on the on the Gazer's GitHub repo, but but uh, we basically take the take the uh, tag and then just build it. We don't like apply any patches on top of it or anything, but we just build it in a in a kind of our controlled way of doing things. So and that that's it. So and that's the that's the whole kind of uh, like a design point for one of the design points for k0s it, it, itself in general so we don't want to start maintaining forks of anything or we we take upstream stuff and use it as this and and just well just build it and package it and wrap it in a single binary cool so all right Wait. Some um, questions, yeah. So, like, when when um, you're upgrading, you're for, talking about the lifecycle management, right? So, when you're up, you're upgrading case zero s to a newer version, it, it actually may have an updated either may have an updated version of all the different components, or may not depending on what the upstream of those different components are. Correct. Yeah. Yes. So, and then the question is like, what if like one user wants to upgrade a single component or maybe a specific version uh, person wants to upgrade uh, just container d for example right because they have they have a feature so that is that supported yet or not uh it's not supported so it's basically all or nothing better so this is something that they have to work with the k0s community yeah. and, or, and figure out if they can get the, the patch then okay. yes 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 but we're actually actually usually pretty pretty fast at shipping patches and especially when it comes to cves i mm -hmm. think we've our our track record for the last half a year or so has been has been in a, in a way that uh, whenever there's been cve on say say container d run c or Kubernetes or basically any of the components in the stack, we've been able to able to push case zero releases within 24 hours after the after the CVE release. So, are you in our announce list or have any security advisors today on Containerd? Uh, I'm not personally on that list, but uh, we we have some people in the in the company on 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 the lists and and uh, but I think we we. Probably should get ourselves also into the into the loop on, on those lists, but any any other other questions before I dive into a quick ish demo on things. All right, all right, all right. So I have, I 
I guess you can see still see the screen. Should I increase the font a bit or? Yeah, please, a little bit. Thanks. All right, all right. So, so basically, what I have is is couple of couple of boxes, and and I'm going to use one of them as a worker and one one as a controller. So, uh, curl s s f l. And this is, of course, something that you shouldn't be doing in production, like environments and whatnot. So, <laughs> so it's it's just a helper script to figure out which version and where to download it from from the from the GitHub. It doesn't like do anything else. But but of course, be sure to read what you're executing in your own servers. <laughs> Uh, so what I have now in place is, is basically k zeros as, as the binary, and and uh, user local bin k zeros. So as you can imagine, because we embed everything into into the k zeros binary itself, it's uh, quite quite a large file. But but then again, nowadays the the file sizes is is like super super rarely an any sort of issue. I have seen it being an issue in one specific case, but that was a really, really, really tiny thing anyways. But yeah, so what we also have is, is uh, helper functionality in the, in the binary itself uh, as, a, as like installing stuff. Install, uh, no, it's not dash dash. Install controller. And I'm using the default configuration because I, I don't want to go into the nitty gritty details of which things and what options we support. Those are always always documented. So, But it's basically just the helper functionality. It creates the uh, user accounts or, or user users for Etsy, the API server, disconnected server and, and, and scheduler, and, and, and then installs itself as a, as a system D service. And that's about it. It doesn't do anything fancier than that, but it's just a helper functionality to inject system D and these users in place. And then we have also a helper command called start, which is actually just starting the system D unit, but it helps, helps users in a way that they don't have to worry about what, what the system D unit path or name or whatnot is. So just like little little helper functionalities. Uh, so if we look at the process list when the controller is actually running, so you'll see that the, the controller boots up everything like at CD and API, API server and, and everything as, as really as separate processes and also uses separate user accounts for basically everything. So. We try to do this sort of a bit of a uh, like a, I don't know separation of concerns also in in that sense. So and and uh, the controller runs through too, right? So that, that's the one managing everything, and that's yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because it has to be able to boot up the all the other processes. So basically, it has to has to be running as root. And and, uh, and yeah, but 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 then again, if you think about it, it's it's like uh, it's it, the K zeros controller is actually following this uh, cloud native pattern of being just a glorified while true loop <laughs> or set of set of while true loops. So so basically, it's like a it's like a one of the main functionalities in it is is being the watchdog for etcd API server and all the all the other components. Yeah, exactly. So. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm I, and 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 that's like what what Kubernetes is also. It's it's like a super super big quotation mark. It's like just set of glorified while true loops, right? Yep. Uh, yeah, but but yeah, that that's the controller. So so basically, if we get that, so so. This is basically just a helper command kubectl. So we've embedded kubectl also into the into the case reverse binary. So you don't have to figure out where to get it and which version to get and whatnot. So 
So if I get nodes, I don't see any nodes because because the control plane isolation. And as you see from the process list, we don't have kubelet or container D or, or anything running with the, with the controller by default. We, we do have this, like if you really want to run the, run the worker plane also on the same node, there's this con, controller dash dash enable worker, which would then boot up also kubelet and container D on the same node. But yeah, that's the control plane isolation in, in, in action. But then if we if, if and when we of course want to want to attach a worker into the cluster, as you know, we, we need to have something that authenticates kubelet to have the initial handshake with the with the uh, with the API server. And for that we need a token. So KZRS token create role equals worker. Life would be so much easier if I wouldn't be making so many typos always. So I'll take a copy paste of that. And yeah, I know this is recorded. So this is not going to last for long. This talk. It's a test cluster. It's just a test cluster. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm going to delete the boxes anyway, like right after the session. So I'll just insert it into a file on the worker. Of course, if you use tools like K0CTL, for example, that it, it automates all these tokens, token creation and, and, and setting up the tokens of the workers and everything. So, but, but, but uh, just, just to highlight how we, how we do things in general from a technical point of view. And if you really want to figure out what the token is, it's actually, actually like, um, it's CD keys or token, then we need to base 64 decode it and then unzip it. Ah, it's... So as you can see, it's actually a fully functional cube config, which has the initial bootstrap token for kubelet. But we just wanted to have it as a one single thing. so. And and it and it of course contains the CA too, so we don't have to do any tricks and tricks and uh, and 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 we can actually use this sort of a with the CA and the token we can actually get this mutual trust on on both parties, so we don't have to do any other tricks to to get a mutual trust on this joint process. So let me grab the curl command. I'm lazy. Just get the case where binary in place. All right, k zeros install worker token file is in TC k zeros token. Now, as we know that we have to run basically everything as root, we don't install or create any users or anything. We just basically inject k zeros as a system D unit. And then k zero start. And as we see the worker is, is did the initial handshake with the with the API server and now it's uh, basically pulling a lot of images to to start with. So Cube Router as the default default uh, CNI implementation. Then of course we have to have this uh, Cube Proxy and, and Core DNS. I mean nothing works without Core DNS and Cube Proxy. So and as you see one of the one of the things we boot up on the on the worker nodes is this connectivity agent which is which is doing this uh, this uh, reverse tunneling for the API server. So on the worker node, you it already install container D, I assume, right? So that yes, we have yes. all the yeah, but it's, it's just yep. didn't. Yeah, let me let me. It, it didn't show, I guess. But the parts are coming up, then it, sh it should be there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely yeah, it's definitely there. So this is the this is the root root uh, k0's process 
running the worker mode and then it boots up container D and kubelet. Got it. Yeah. And as you see from the from the path to the binaries, so the 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 case of binary is sort of like a kind of a self-extracting thing. So so it actually extracts the container D and kubelet binaries into place and then mm. executes those as, as separate processes. We have a uh, Faviano from Kata containers on the call. So I'm wondering uh, if uh, you can actually support like a custom container D configuration. Yes. Um, it, they, so I think, I think he might be interested in, from the Kata containers perspective, like like a different runtime. Uh, no, what was the path K zeros? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. so that's the default default place, and 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 when K zeros boots up, it, it basically checks that whether there is a container D config or not, and if there is, it it's going to use whatever you give it, and if not, it'll create the default configuration mm -hmm. and go with that. That's cool. From from the Kata container side, we have a we have a tool, it's a demo set that we use to deploy on different clusters. So. We, we already support Kubernetes, of course, and, and K3S. Uh, it seems that adding support to, to K0s there would not be hard. It would actually be reasonably simple. So if you are interested on, on having this, this collaboration, please let me know and, and we can make it happen. Yeah, sure, sure. I mean, I mean, what the, the, the more the merrier, right? So the more platform support got that, the, the better, of course, and then the more kind of run times we we support one way or another, the, the better, of course. So so absolutely yes. And I, I I don't think how you how you do things, but but it sounded like that if if you use like uh, demon set to basically inject the bits and pieces into place and and find you in the config, then it seems like almost like trivial. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And then the, the main thing would be just looking at the right path, right? Because we we look for, for specific paths for for yeah. on, on K3S, and then it would be just like looking at specific paths uh, on on K zeros, and, and that would be it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds sounds almost trivial, but but I know that from the history that that's one of the one of the scariest things to say out loud. Right. All right, all right, all right. Oh yeah, I promised I'll I'll show how we configure the how we configure the API server. So uh, let me check the API server. What's the process ID for that? Can't pro. Oh my God, there's so many flags. Uh, yeah, there it is. So we we configure the, the API server with this egress selector config, which basically basically means that uh, we, we configure the API server in a way that whenever it needs to call something in the cluster, whether it's kubelet, whether, it, whether it's API, server getting a user request to proxy some port to a pod or doing an exec or exec session uh, or or anything like that it uses this uh, this egress selector functionality and 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 basically then if we look at the file itself um, i don't think there's any secrets even in it yeah so so basically Whatever is whatever is communication is directed towards the cluster, it'll actually use this this uh, custom gRPC based proxy protocol, and 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 connect to this local socket which the server is is, is using. So basically, basically I said that uh, as I as I mentioned previously already. So the the agent running on the on the worker node connects to this. Uh, this connectivity server process and they do MTLS. So mm -hmm. then this is the 
sort of the other end of that tunnel, this this uh, local socket. So whatever whatever the connectivity server traffic sees from this local socket, it, it actually then passes it through to this tunnel that is opened actually by the, the worker. And this is this is the bits and pieces that really allow K zeros to, to have like super versatile deployment architectures. Like this is on the control plane, but what about on the on the worker node? Is that it connects to a local socket thing or are you sure? Yeah, that one. Yeah. Uh the the worker the worker is actually connecting directly to the API. Oh, okay, got it. Okay. So that tunnel that tunnel is from from the oh okay, so it's like um so if you have a low balancer, you can actually connect to multiple. Um, yes. Got it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And 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 yeah, that that tunnel is like like kubectl get pod minus a oh, k okay, zeros. So for example, when I do this logs command. Minus n cube system logs. So this this cube CDL command is of course it it's a it's a call to the API. Mm -hmm. But then the API figures out that okay, hey, to get the logs, I actually have to connect to the cubelet on the worker node. So that part, the the connection from the uh, API server. To the kubelet on the node is actually done through this tunneling mechanism, mm -hmm. so that we can bypass so, sort of bypass firewalls and and NAT layers of NAT and whatnot. So makes sense. Which, as said, enables a lot of lot of versatility on the deployment architectures and like super fancy fancy stuff. I was at uh, at at. Uh, uh, Amazon reinvent a couple of weeks ago, and and I'm I'm based in Finland, so the flights are super super long. So I was bored during the flight. So what I actually did, I I, I had a control plane running in a public cloud, and and I actually connected a worker node from the plane, <laughs> just for fun. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. But but it's 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 really like a and I'm 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 running a full block and everything on that but uh, but uh, uh, that's that's really like like showcasing the the possibilities that that this sort of a architecture allows you to do. Was the connectivity intermittent or was it was it a pretty good connectivity? Because I mean that that's a typical scenario when where you have devices at the edge and they have an intermittent connectivity. So and then I, I suppose like this control plane would be able to to manage that or to to be um, resili resilient, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, of course, both the, 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 the agent side, which opens up the tunnel when, when it sees that the tunnel is closed for networking failure or something, of course, it, it'll retry to open up the tunnel and everything but mm -hmm. what it what it means of course if if the if there's a disconnected network of course i can't do like kubectl get logs of something because the api server won't be able to connect to it that's that's sort of expected in that case so but it would it would work exactly the same from the i mean from the end user point of view it's exactly the same even if in a in a non-tunneled way of setting up things if you're worker node is out of network then it's out of network and you can't get the logs of things so i don't see a like a what is the user experience you you basically get an error uh here yeah you, so, you get uh, some connection connection refused error or something okay and it's immediate just like a timeout or something like that I guess. yeah i think it's a i i, I think it's a timeout or, like some, timeout. Or, or some or some or some typical golang context cancel thingy yeah yeah, because I think I was thinking like uh, from the user experience, it's a lot worse to just wait for like 60 seconds until it turns out rather than just getting a, an error message immediately, right? So, and you get that error message, okay, I know what's going on, right? But it's like 
if you wait, have to wait like 60 seconds, you're, you're like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. Uh, let's try it out. Oh, but, oh, but it doesn't. Oh, this is actually. I think you had to kill the tunnel or something. Yeah, I had to kill the tunnel and whatnot, but yeah. But anyway, it'll it'll course, either yeah. either error out immediately or time out. But but uh, but yeah, that's a that's a good point that that for a user it's better to time out sooner than later. But yeah, that's that that's basically like K zeros in a in a nutshell and and uh, and then. Awesome. Thank you for the presentation. It was uh, very informational and exciting. So uh, looking forward to uh, the project uh, maturing and, you know, addressing, well, you know, all the different needs of all the end users. And... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do, you, do you plan to join the CNCF or, or this is, the, they haven't talked about that yet or? Uh, we haven't had like any 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 serious discussions on that at least yet. So so um, yeah. But of course, uh, it's definitely, definitely the something. So the, 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 the door is open. So do you have a like, sandbox application? Uh, yeah. Also, we have incubation. I mean, some projects sometimes decide to go for incubation directly if they're mature enough and they can fulfill, fulfill the requirements. Right. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but 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 yeah, as I said, we haven't had like any any super serious discussions on on either direction. So so uh, I think the the door hasn't been shut in any way or or but 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 at least there's no like immediate plans to to do something like that. But uh, but when I when we have to the, yeah, one of the things that comes up a lot is I mean because there there's so many projects that are similar you have k3s you have cube edge you have a open your you have super edge you have you have k0s and some of the things that you know, come up are like you know how is this project different right what mm -hmm. how, how is it addressing the end users in a different way and so so in the spirit of not confusing the end users when there's so many open source projects that are addressing similar needs but i think uh when when the projects actually you know, decide to do whatever they need to do to join the CCF. Like they just start to look at like the different things and how they're different from different projects and how they address different needs. Yeah, yeah. But it does come up quite a bit, I think. Yes, yes, and it does come up, of course, for us too in the in, in many of the discussions. Like, how are you different than this or that or the third thing or something? Yeah. So. But I guess that's that's like for any any open source project, yeah, at least in a in a space where you have more than one project in the same yep. same same area and space. So, all right, thank you. Any other anybody else has any other questions? Anything that they want to comment? Anything that they have in their minds? All right, 10 seconds. <laughs> Last call. <laughs> going once, going twice. Has anybody been involved with this uh, with this uh, latest 123 and the ARM issue? I think maybe Philip might have an idea. He works for ARM. So. What, what issue is it? Uh, so there was there was an there was a bug in the in the I think it's actually a bug in the C advisor, but but as the C advisor stuff is embedded in in kubectl, it, it it basically makes kubectl do crash on on ARM v seven. There's a PR there's, there's a there's a PR already open and everything, but I'm I'm just wondering that that does anybody know if there's like a quick patch release planned or anything. Because we are, we we were about to release uh, K zeros with Cube one twenty three like this week, but then we actually stomped over that bug and and uh, and then, and we are wondering that should we actually do a quick.
patch in, in K0 is kind of build pipeline for that, or should we wait for the 1.23.1 patch release? Okay, I can, if you paste the PR reference in the chat window here or send it to me, I can check it out. Uh, let me see if I can, I can figure it out somewhere. Oh my God. I need to stop the share, otherwise I'll accidentally share some other window that I shouldn't be sharing. The bank account. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's going to be full of zeros, but <laughs> it doesn't, that doesn't matter. <laughs> oh my God, I had it. I had the bug open somewhere. I can't remember where it was. No, not that one. If you can't find it, you can always uh, sync up with this. Yeah, you can email it to me offline, is okay. Or, or on Slack. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think you'll, you'll find it quite top of the list on the C advisor pull okay. request list. So, oh yeah, if, yeah, now I find it on the C advisor site. So, find the chat. That's the PR on, on C advisor side. Okay. And then there's a cross reference to the Kubernetes bug. Thank you. Yeah, we, okay. we actually found it found it because we, we actually run the run the uh, kind of uh, K zeros level smoke integration tests on real ARM V7. So we found it there also. Okay. All right, all right. Well, thank you. Thanks for thanks for having us. Yep. Thank talk you for about presenting. Roads and 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 uh, you'll you'll find me on the Kubernetes Slack and everything. So if, if there's any any questions afterwards, just ping me there and I'll try to help. Great. Thank you. Well, I'll, we'll see you around. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.